Hi, welcome to the Medical Simulation Laboratory just off-site of uh, Johnson Space Center in Houston, where we have with us Dr. Christian Otto, who is the uh, Visual Impairment Intracranial Pressure Risk uh, Lead Scientist. And he's one of the many people who are looking at the, the changes we've seen in astronaut vision um, during their stays in space. And he's going to tell us a little bit about that. So why don't you start by telling us what the Visual Impairment Intracranial Risk is. Yeah, Brandy, so the, the VIP risk, which we affectionately refer to it as, is actually NASA's number one human spaceflight risk now. It's a risk that encompasses a constellation of signs and symptoms that have recently discovered in the astronauts on the space station since 2005. And it is exactly as it, as it sounds. It's visual impairment, so change in vision and change in the structure of the eye. And we feel that that's precipitated possibly by elevated intracranial pressure. The concern is that if astronauts were exposed to this for a longer period of time, not just six months on the space station, but for three years on a Mars mission, that it could possibly uh, precipitate blindness in some cases. So we've been, I guess, studying this for a little while now. We've kind of developed a suite of different, of different ways that we're collecting data on uh, in orbit, right? Yeah, so the program has uh, become more and more sophisticated with the suite of uh, diagnostic equipment that we have on board now. Uh, we have the diagnostic ultrasound device that has given us a tremendous insight into the changes in the structure of the eye in flight compared to on the ground uh, in terms of the, the shape of the eye, uh, changes that are occurring behind the eye. Uh, I'll be talking to you about the uh, uh, tonometer, which measures intraocular pressure. So that's very important, what's happening to the pressure inside of the eye over the course of the flight, but more importantly, the relationship of that pressure to what's going on behind the eye. Uh, a new device that's been on station for just over a year now is the ocular coherence tomography device. And this has really has been giving us tremendous information in terms of what's happening down at the level of the retina and the, and the, uh, the nerves exiting the uh, optic nerve head. We can actually see very finite changes in uh, that layer in terms of swelling down to the micron level. So we can follow that during flight and we've been able to detect some individuals have a large amount of swelling, others have a very small amount of swelling. So that gives us tremendous insight into what may be precipitating the problem from a susceptibility and functional point of view. Uh, other devices that we have, we use uh, transcranial Doppler now. That's a relatively new device to look at blood flow in the brain. Okay, and I think today we're here in, in particular to learn more about the tonometer. Is that how you say That's it? right. So what I have here is the tonometer, the tonopen, which we use to measure intraocular pressure in flight. And here's a model of the eye. It's a cutaway of the eye. And what you have here is the anterior chamber. This is the cornea. And then we have the posterior chamber. And then you see the uh, white part of the eye or the sclera. And the astronauts will anesthetize the eye first with an anesthetic. It, 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 it uh, lasts for uh, just a few minutes. And then they tap on the eye. Uh, an ultra, uh, operator will tap on the eye and get a measurement. And that way we can follow the pressure in the eye over the course of the mission. What we're interested in is the pressures inside of the eye and the pressures behind the eye. We can't measure pressures behind the eye, but we can get an indirect measure uh, from technologies like ultrasound. Um, and I can demonstrate how we might do that in flight. I won't actually do it to you, but okay. so because, you know, Many of our astronauts, we have a few physician astronauts, but most of them are not medically trained. They do get some medical training prior to flight. They will be trained on the tonometer, but it is a ground-guided procedure. And so your eye would be anesthetized, so you wouldn't feel this, put some drops in. And then the operator would, would just stabilize uh, with their hand on your face, and they're stabilized as well on structure. The crew members stabilize on structure, and then they would tap the cornea. And you tap several times, and then there's an audible chirp, and that comes up with a value. Uh, it's an activity that actually takes only five minutes. It's quite quick. Does it, does it actually hurt? Do you need the um, anesthetic? Oh, yeah. So it would very much be like getting a poke in the eye with a sharp <laughs> stick without the anesthetic. So that's absolutely required. And then uh, obviously with the crew member, you want them to be very careful afterwards because they don't have that protective corneal reflex. Okay. So they have uh, specific instructions uh, afterwards. So why is that important? Well, we really think that it may be an issue of the balance of two pressures in the eye. Typically, the pressure in the eye 
is five millimeters of mercury higher than the pressure behind the eye, which is the intracranial pressure. In space, with the cephalad fluid shift, with fluid moving towards the head, we hypothesize that the intracranial pressure in flight may actually be much higher than it is on the ground. What may be happening in space is the intracranial pressure rises because cephalad fluid shift, uh, because we lose the force due to gravity, and the pressure then now behind the eye is larger than in front of the eye. Mm -hmm. It could be larger by now 10 millimeters of mercury or more. So that means that the resultant force is now in the opposite direction, possibly two times or more. Why is that important? Well, there's a structure in the back of the eye as the, the, the nerve, optic nerve runs through that transduces the pressure when there's a pressure gradient. It's pretty good at transducing that pressure gradient when it's five to 10. It's not that great when it's over 10. And that may be why we're seeing the swelling in the back of the, the eye, the optic disc. And if this is allowed to persist at a high grade for a long period of time, you actually kill off those neurons and the, the crew member is susceptible to getting peripheral visual field loss. We've not found any crew members who've dealt up that yet, but again, the time in flight is relatively short compared to a three-year Mars mission. So it sounds like you're already getting some good data back from what you're already doing on orbit, right? Absolutely, and so with each passing year, with the more sophisticated technologies that are deployed to space station, the data that we're collecting is giving us uh, more and more information and knowledge on what may be happening and what may be uh, uh, precipitating the problem. Okay, well, so what are some of the next steps for the program? So the first step is understanding the problem, and so we're collecting data. And the, the research effort and the clinical effort, I think, is starting to get a better understanding of what the precipitants are. So then the next step is to define what that is exactly to be sure of that, and then to develop countermeasures. And so how do we prevent this problem from happening? There are a number of things. There may be individuals who have a certain susceptibility, um, but again, on a much longer mission, even if you have individuals who are resistant, we'll need countermeasures. So then the next step is to try and uh, test these countermeasures and see if they have an effect. The fluid shifts experiment uh, will uh, begin next year, starting with the one-year crew member, where we'll actually uh, they will use the Russian Chibis device. This is a, uh, an experiment with our Russian colleagues that actually creates lower body negative pressure. And so it actually draws fluids down. So it creates more of a 1G physiological state. And we'll be able to measure those changes in the eye both before and after to see does the individual with the lower body negative pressure go back to a 1G state. So that, that's an in-flight experiment. Okay, well, it sounds very interesting. And I'm sure we'll look forward to hearing more about the about the study as it progresses. Hopefully we'll get some, some good answers soon. Thanks for your interest. Thank you. Again, this was Dr. Christian Otto, who is uh, here in the Medical Simulation Laboratory, uh, the lead scientist for the Visual Impairment Intracranial Pressure Risk.